You know that that mocking scourging the the storms, those nails, all that he went through, so that he could save you know, a sinner like me. So thank. No day in the book of Psalms, chapter 23. I know you know this scripture, I know it's a well known scripture. You've probably heard many messages on this scripture. The Lord has given me a, a message from it today. I ask you to open your hearts and let God speak to you what he would want to speak to you. shepherd takes care of the sheep. The shepherd leads the sheep. The, the shepherd watches over the sheep. Without the shepherd, the sheep would be in, in a bad place. The sheep would be lost. The sheep would be uh, uh, prey for a hungry animal. The sheep would uh, uh, not be able to find everything that they need to survive. I want you to think about this and put yourself in this place. Uh, what is it that, that David said? I can say the same thing. The Lord is my shepherd. And because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, I shall not do without, I shall not lack anything. Because the Lord is my shepherd, uh, he is going to provide everything that I need, everything that I will ever need. Uh, the Lord is going to make sure that I have it. But because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Not only does he provide everything that I need uh, to take care of me and, and, and to make sure I'm in good shape, he, he not only does that, but he makes me to lie down in green pasture. He gives me rest. He gives me peace. He gives me gentle, easy places to lay. Uh, he makes it so that I don't have to be worried and I don't have to be concerned. I, I don't have to uh, be looking here and there for whatever trouble is coming because I want to tell you something. He's the shepherd. He takes care of the sheep. I don't got to worry about that. He's given me everything that I need and he says because he gives me everything that I need, because I I know that he will provide because I know that he will take care of me. I can lay down and just rest. I can have peace. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Uh, he leadeth me beside the still waters. If you really think about the way that this is being said, it's just a picture of peace and calm and tranquility and rest and assurance. And why can this sheep have all of that? Because he knows who his shepherd is. He knows what his shepherd is capable of. He knows that his shepherd will take care of him, will provide for him, will meet his need. And his shepherd does all that and brings him to a place of peace and joy and safety and comfort. He goes on and he said, uh, he restoreth my soul. Uh, if I get a little weary, if I get a little down, he'll replenish me. He'll restore me. He'll bring me back to that place that I need. He'll do all these things. And not only that, he will lead me where I need to walk. He will lead me in the path uh, that will take me where I need to go. Uh, that will take me, it says he leads me in the path of righteousness. If I follow the shepherd and I walk in the path that he leads me in, uh, then I'm always going to be in the right 
place? Am I going to be under the shepherd's protection? Am I going to be in a place where he will provide for me? Am I going to be in a place where I can have peace? I don't know if you are, if you have, if you will, uh, but I want to encourage you, make this personal, because it is personal. These are promises of God to every child of God, to every sheep in his flock, uh, to every lamb in his fold. Uh, these are promises of God. But listen, hey, you can be a sheep and be in the flock and be rebellious. The shepherd is there to provide. Uh, but if you don't take what the shepherd provides, it's not going to do you any good. The shepherd is there to lead you uh, to a place of peace. But if you refuse to have peace, it's not going to do you any good. He can take you. To, you know the old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. That's right. He can take you there, uh, but you can reject what it is that he's offered you, what he has prepared for you, what he has made for you. And a lot of Christians do that. Uh, God has prepared all this and provided all this. But in our minds, we're so concerned and so worried about everything out here that we miss what it is that the shepherd has for us. Mm -hmm. Come on. We miss what it is that he wants to do for us. Listen. Little sheep, if the Lord is your shepherd, you don't have a care. You don't have a worry. You don't have a concern. Listen to what he says. I shall not want. Go back to the original meaning. You know what that means? I won't lack anything. And I'm going to tell you something. And you may think when I say this, Man, you're lucky. I wish I had it so good. I don't lack anything. That's right. And I ain't lucky. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed. That's right. Amen. And if you're a child of God, you're blessed if you choose to be blessed. That's right. You don't lack if you choose not to lack. Mm -hmm. You can go to that place of uh, the green grass and the still water. I get a picture of my mind of this lush green meadow and a babbling brook. And I'm just laying down in the grass with my hands behind my head, watching the clouds float by. You ever do that? Mm -hmm. With the warm sunshine just beating down. There's nothing like that. You can live your Christian life there. But wait a minute, can you? He goes on. Listen to what he says next. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Listen, he starts out here saying, listen to what he said. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He went from that green pasture into the valley of the shadow of death. But what did he say when he got into the shadow of death, into that valley? What did he say? I will fear no evil. Because you're still with me. You're still with me. Listen, uh, in, in his sight, in what the sheep could see, he began to look around him. He saw that he was in a valley. I get kind of a picture of, of a rugged valley and, and hills going up on each side and there's all these big rocks and boulders and brush and stuff like that. And when I look out there, I begin to imagine, well, there's a wolf behind that boulder and there's a bear behind that brush and all that kind of stuff. But you know what? What this sheep did, he said, yeah, even though I'm in that valley, I ain't scared because you are with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. He wasn't looking at the brush. He wasn't looking at the rock. What was he looking at? He was looking at the shepherd. He had his eyes on the shepherd. Hey, his focus was on the shepherd. And because his focus was on the shepherd, he wasn't worried about anything else. Now, our problem is, uh, when we have to go through the valley, we begin to take our eyes off the shepherd. And we look behind every rock. We look behind every bush. We look for behind every tree for a booger, don't we? Amen. That's right. Keep your eyes on the shepherd. Uh, listen, the sheep were going through this valley. It was in a deep, dark valley. It might have 
must have been so bad because he describes it as the valley of the shadow of death. But even in this valley, he can say, listen to what he said. I really want this to sink in. And again, you make this personal. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know what the shepherd's rod was? It was a big club. That's what it was. And most of the time, from what I read, most of the time these were made out of a big stick that had a knot at the end. And that knot was carved into a round ball. And sometimes even in that round ball, they would put pieces of metal or stone. And you know what that club was for? To beat the booger over the head. <laughs> He said, thy rod comforts me. That speaks of power. That speaks of strength. That speaks of authority. Your shepherd carries that rod. Your shepherd will use that rod to protect you, to keep you, uh, to make sure uh, that nothing comes out from behind the boulder, that nothing comes out from behind the bush. But listen, if you get your eyes off the shepherd, you begin to wander a little bit this way and a little bit this way. And if you get too close to the rock, or if you get too close to the boulder, uh, the bear or the wolf or the lion can reach out and grab you. You know, there's a scripture that said, he that breaks the hedge, the serpent will bite him. It doesn't say the serpent can break the hedge. It doesn't say the serpent can get through the hedge. It doesn't say anything like that. It says when you break the hedge, uh, when you take your eyes off of the shepherd, uh, when you get too close to the end, uh, that's when the problem comes. But if you would be like these sheep and you would keep your eyes on the shepherd, have confidence in the shepherd. He uses that club. He uses that rod on your behalf to keep you safe. Right. Said that rod and thy staff they comfort me. You know what the staff was? You probably all seen the shepherd's crook. It had a crook on the end, and the shepherd would use that. And the reading that I did, it always said it this way: to gently guide his sheep. And if they fall in a crevice or something like that, that hook can be used uh, to pull them back out. But I want you to get that point to gently guide his sheep. God ain't going to take a hold of you and make you do something you don't want to do. He is there for you. He will provide for you. He will take care of you. He will protect you. He will do everything that's needed to done. But he ain't going to force himself on anybody. He ain't going to force you to walk in a way you choose not to walk. Uh, he gently leads and guides. You. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. <clears throat> Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Let me ask you a question. Uh, maybe you haven't been in this valley, but how many of you have been in a valley? Amen. How many of you have been in a valley that looked really deep and really dark? Amen. How many of you have been in a valley that looked really deep and really dark? And there's all these boulders and trees and brush and stuff for problems to hide behind. And you just knew another problem was coming. You just knew I get out of one and here comes another one. You just knew nothing ever goes right. I think I'm doing good. Then all of a sudden, here, how many of us have ever said that? Uh -huh. And we're looking for it to come. Amen. We're expecting it to come. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Just because we're so sure it's coming, just because we're expecting it to come, sometimes we walk over and take a look behind the rock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. Oh, yeah. That's when the bear or the wolf or the lion can go. That's right. And give you a good one upside your head. Hmm. And that's what we do. That's right. But listen, what he said, even in this valley, and I want you to know even in your valley, it, you, I know you've been there, you may be there now, if you ain't, you're probably going to walk through another one, but I want you to listen to what he said, even in the valley, thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Listen, he's still providing, he's still taking care of them, even in the present, uh, Satan may be out there on the edges, uh, the problems may be out there on the edges, 
but even in the presence of this, even in the presence of the enemy, he will prepare you a table. Uh, listen, I don't know how you are, but I get mental images uh, when I'm reading the Word of God, and I can just see myself and the Lord and some other Christians. We're in the deep, dark valley, and you know what? God's got one of them fold-out tables, and he folds it out and puts the legs down, and he pulls up a chair and says, sit down. He goes over here, and he brings a picnic basket, and he opens it up, and he's feeding me, and the wolf and the bear and the lion are over there drooling with their mouths watering, wishing they had what I had. And I don't even got to worry about that because the whole time the shepherd's standing there with his rod in one hand and his staff in the other. And then things behind the rock can't come over. And listen, even in that valley, even in the presence of those things that want to bug you and haunt you and bring you down and steal your faith, even in the presence, if you will choose to pull up to the table, he will still feed you. Even in the valley, you can have what we talked about at the beginning. You can be in that place of joy and peace. Because you know what? Your joy and your peace isn't dependent on your surroundings. That's right. Amen. It's dependent on your shepherd. That's right. So many Christians, their joy and their peace and their feel good and whatever else you want to call it is dependent on what's going on around them. Well, what kind of situation or circumstance? Well, it ain't dependent on that. It's dependent on the shepherd. He said, even in the presence of my enemies, you prepare a table for me. And he don't stop there. He goes on and says, thou anointest my head with oil. You know what oil represents in the Bible? It represents the spirit of God. It don't matter how bad, how deep, how dark, how many boogers are behind the rock. It just does not matter. I can have the spirit of God come on me. I can rejoice. I can have joy. I can have peace. I can get excited. I can get pumped up. Because it don't matter what's going on around me. It matters who my shepherd is. Is. He said, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Yes. Even in there, I can have so much of God that it overflows, uh, that I can't contain it, uh, that I can't stop it. Uh, you know, uh, most of the excitement and the running and the jumping and the shouting and all this we see is when somebody gets somebody pumped up or everything is going really good and things like that. Well, you know what? I've been in a valley. I ain't come out of it yet. But my cup's running over Amen. because my shepherd provided that for me. And I chose to look at my shepherd. I chose to uh, receive what my shepherd had for me. I refuse to worry about what's over there and what's over there and what's behind that. I don't care because he's got a club and they can't touch me. Amen. He goes on and he says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He has a confidence. He has a hope. He has a trust, knowing that who his shepherd is. And because he knows who his shepherd is, he knows goodness and mercy are his, because these are the promises of God. You know the scriptures. His mercies are new every day, every day, every day. Surely I will have goodness and mercy all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I've read that over and over. I've heard it preached about. I've heard it talked about. And I always thought and agreed with everything that I heard that that's heaven. Uh, when I get to the end of this path, when I get to the end of this road, I'm going to dwell in heaven forever. Yes, that's true. But it's more than that. I can dwell in the house of the Lord right here right now Amen. and I am because I know who my shepherd is right. I know what my shepherd can do I know what he is capable of and I trust him and I believe in him and I have confidence in him so it does not matter what is going on around me it doesn't matter what valley I got to walk through it doesn't matter what's behind the tree none of that matters I can live in peace Amen. I can live with joy. I can live excited. I can live with confidence. I can live in the presence of my shepherd. Now I want you to notice something here. The first three verses in this song are written in the third person. Did you ever take notice of that? Listen to what he said. 
And then the Lord is. He makes. He leads. He restores. Did you ever notice when uh, in, your, in your perception, in your way of thinking, did you ever notice that when things are going good and you don't have problems uh, and, and, you know, everything is uh, going along fairly well, we talk about God. In the first three verses, he's talking about God. But as soon as it starts getting bad, he starts talking to God. Did you notice that? Listen.